What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. This is episode three of Fact to Fit and how I did it. In today's episode, we are going to go over the most important things I wish I knew when I first started my weight loss journey and we're gonna do a QA and a where viewers, you guys have sent in questions on weight loss, my journey and all kinds of stuff that I'm gonna answer throughout this episode. If you guys are new here, my name is Colin Joy and this is my YouTube channel and this is my series Fat to Fit and how I did it where I show you guys how I lost over 100 pounds. I was 380 pounds when I I first started my journey and I'm now down to 165 and this is my story of my journey and I'm going to show you guys how you can reach your fitness and weight loss goals as well by finding out what works for you so let's get right into this week's episode so we're gonna go on to the first thing I wish I knew when I first started my weight loss journey you guys will hear me preach it over and over and over again finding out what works for you it didn't take me long to find out what worked for me but I did learn that what works for you will change over time. So when I initially started, what worked for me then doesn't work for me now and didn't work for me halfway through my journey. When I first started out, I was eating a lot less to lose weight than I am eating now when I want to lose weight. And that's because when I first started, I wasn't really running. I was walking and I was running some, but I wasn't running the distance that I am now. Throughout your journey, what works for you once you find out what that is, it's gonna change and weight loss isn't linear. Find out what works for you and adjust over time. Now we're gonna jump into our first question. I asked on social media to you guys to hit me with some questions about my weight loss journey, losing weight, anything you wanna know and we got quite a few questions. So my friend Courtney Holland, she's also a fitness trainer into fitness and all that stuff, asked several questions. So we're gonna go over the first question that she asked me. Are you taking any weight loss medications or appetite suppressants like Ozempic, uh, Manjaro, etc.? No, I am not at all. In the beginning of my weight loss journey, I did take these green tea weight loss pills, but they were more caffeine, so what they did is they suppressed my appetite pretty much. I took those in the beginning and they were just caffeine and green tea and stuff like that. And I don't remember all the uh, ingredients, but overall they didn't really help me lose weight. They just kind of suppressed my appetite. So I guess they did help some, but uh, I don't take them anymore. I only took them through the first month or two or whatever till I noticed they weren't really working. But no, I don't currently take any kind of weight loss medications or shots or anything like that. I don't really uh, believe in any of those things like Manjaro and stuff. I don't believe in using it for weight loss. I believe that it's great for people that if that's the one that goes for uh, diabetics I think it is um, you know it's great for them and it helps them but I don't believe in using it just for weight loss so thank you Courtney for your question now on to tip number two that I wish I knew when I first started out in my weight loss journey and this one is a big one for me we'll start to understand when I'm answering this question why it's a big one for me if you've watched my previous two episodes don't get hooked on the scale number yes the scale is an absolutely amazing tool you guys can use when losing weight but I'll tell you right now the getting hooked on that scale scale number can really mess with you mentally and it can take you down a road that you really don't want to go down and here's why so I'm gonna kind of break it down and explain why it can put you in a bad place mentally weight loss overall is not linear it will not always continue to trend down you won't go from 380 pounds to 280 to 180 it doesn't work like that. It goes up and down. It fluctuates every day depending on what you eat, how much you drink and all that. What I'm going to say now is very important. Fat loss does not always equal weight loss. What I mean by that is just because you're losing fat does not mean that the weight on the scale is going to change. If you're lifting weights and working out and eating properly like you should getting your protein in, one gram of protein per pound of goal body weight is very important when in a weight loss phase because you don't want to lose muscle and if you can you want to gain muscle and you can do that if you've never lifted before never worked out in a weight loss journey you pretty much are more susceptible to building muscle while you're losing fat than say somebody that's lifted weights and done stuff like that for a long time you could be doing what's called body recomposition is where you're recomping your body your body will look totally different but the scale weight might not change say you've lost two pounds of fat but you gained two pounds of muscle the scale weight might not change but you look different your clothes fit different everything's changing it just you don't see it on the scale the scale is a tool but the scale is not the end all be all at a time in my journey the scale was the end all be all for me and that's all i watched and it took me down a 
road that I never want to go down again. It messed with me mentally and I was just hooked on seeing that number drop on the scale. So if you're even remotely like that or if you're like that, really listen to what I'm saying and watch this. Go back and play what I just said again. We are fixing to go on to the next question, but first, later I've got something to show you guys. There's somebody for you guys to meet. I actually got a new running partner and I'm gonna go pick her and her sister up later. Anyway, you guys will see what I mean. We're gonna go pick them up later. Marissa's gonna go with me. It's really awesome. We'll tune you guys in. But the next question is Mr. Colby Coleman. Used to be my band teacher in school. Awesome guy, doing awesome on his health and weight loss fitness journey. He asked me, do you deal with water retention? Yes, yes I do. And a lot of times I don't notice it a whole lot. It's just when I eat more carbs or anything like that, you're gonna retain water, especially when you, like I said, eat more carbs or different things throughout the day. But like when I do my huge cheat meals or videos that you guys have seen up here before, I definitely hold a lot of water. But something you want to note about that is it's just that, it's water. It's gonna go away. The scale weight is going to go up, but you're not gaining fat. Stay hydrated and it will flush out and your weight will go back to normal. So don't fixate on that if you hold water. You'll notice it in your skin, you'll notice it on your stomach, you know. You'll notice those things, but it's not there to stick around. I used to focus on that and it really bugged me. But yes, I do deal with water retention and it just honestly depends on the day and what I eat and stuff like that. But don't fixate on it, especially if you eat a bigger meal or something like that or around the holidays because when the weight scale goes up, it doesn't always mean fat gain. It could just be water and it'll flush out. Thank you for your question, Mr. Coleman. On to the next thing I wish I knew when I first started my weight loss journey is take the pictures. Take the pictures for progress so you can see your progress over time and take them throughout. At the very, very, very beginning, I didn't personally take pictures. There were pictures taken of me by other people at events we were at and stuff, so I luckily enough had those, but I didn't take the pictures. Like I said, I was lucky enough to have those because otherwise I wouldn't see the progress. I did not start noticing I was losing weight for quite a while. Like, it was a very long time, wasn't it? Like, Marissa noticed it first, and my friends noticed it first, and everybody's like, oh, you're looking good, but like, I couldn't see it. And I know some other people uh, that follow me struggle with that because they have told me that and I told them the same thing. I didn't see it. Your friends see it first and you're the last one to see it. So take the photos, put them in an album somewhere and keep them so you can see your progress over time because after I started doing that, I could see the progress and I'm very thankful that I took them and started taking them early enough. So take the photo, it'll definitely pay off in the end. Now, we're gonna move on to another question. So real quick, I wanna drop it. We're doing a giveaway over on my Facebook page. It is linked in the description down below. It's always linked down there. It says, my new Facebook page. Go over, and if you have not yet, follow my page on Facebook. Once I reach 500 followers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. More details to come on that soon. But yeah, we're gonna give away something cool at 500 followers, so head over there, give me a follow. Thank you guys. Lighting's not the best, but we're gonna move on to question number two from Courtney, and that question was, did you have weight loss surgery? No, I did not have any type of weight loss surgery or anything like that. It's just not my thing. I'm not all about surgery and hospitals in that way. And I know it's probably gonna lead to another question. Do I have loose skin since I was over 380 pounds and now I'm 165? And luckily, very, very little. Like, it is unnoticeable, pretty much. And I am very blessed because I have some friends and people I know that have lost that amount of weight and extreme amounts of weight and have really loose skin. And the reason I think I don't have loose skin like that is when I first started, I wasn't doing a lot of cardio. I wasn't running and stuff like that. I was walking and I was lifting weights religiously. Every night, pounding the weights like crazy and eating properly. So I was body recompositioning as I talked before. So I built muscle under all that fat, which helped me tone all that up. I feel like if I did not do that, I would definitely have a lot of loose skin. But no, no weight loss surgery. Thanks for your question. Now we're gonna move on to the next thing I wish I knew. Hey, right, so we're heading out right now. I told you guys that I have a new running partner. We're heading to pick her and her sister up. You guys will get to meet them. This right here is my new running partner. This is Goober Goober. Up here, come here, come here. This is my new running partner. And that is her sister back there because her sister knows how to behave and Goober, well, Goober does, but she doesn't. Goldie is a lady. Yeah, Goldie's a lady. They're both girls, but Goldie's a lady. Goober's tomboy. Goldie. Goldie. There's Goldie and there's Goober. So welcome them to the family, guys. Drop a comment and welcome them to the family. See, I didn't adopt the dogs. Technically, they adopted me or Goober adopted me. Next thing I wished I knew when I first started my weight loss journey, and that is going to be progress over perfection. Progress over perfection. That means focus on the progress other than being perfect because you don't have to be perfect all the time. 
to make progress. And a lot of the times, and I've done it before too, we get caught up in the perfection part of it, being perfect, that we lose sight of the progress or don't even see the progress because we're too stuck on being perfect. You don't have to be perfect to make progress. Trust me. This question is another question from Courtney. How long did it take you to lose over 100 pounds? So I started losing weight before COVID. All in all, it took me about a year to lose over 100 pounds. But during that time, I did hit some difficult times, which will go into her next question, what we answer in a minute. But overall, it took me about a year to lose over 100 pounds. We're gonna move on to Courtney's next question because they kind of coincide together. Her fourth question was, did you have any lapses along your weight loss journey and how did you overcome them? Yes. I did. Boy, did I. Okay, let's dive straight into this one. And I'm going to do a special episode, I think, on that now that it has gained a lot of attention that people want to know about that part of my story. But yes, I had a huge lap. Did I gain a lot of weight back? No, I was very lucky in that way. I've had a couple lapses along the way. I'd say maybe two overall. But the one that stands out the most is the very first one I had is I was doing everything right, you know, when I started out, I was eating right, I was excited, not going too hardcore or anything like that, and then I got fixated on seeing that scale drop. I saw that scale number and that's all I focused on. Boy, did that screw me over. We all make mistakes. That's why I'm making this series to share with everybody out there so they don't make the same mistakes I did. I was focused on seeing the scale drop and it just, I wanted it to get lower and lower and lower, and that's all I focused on. I almost ended up in the hospitals. The sad part is I couldn't see it. I couldn't see that my face was sinking in. I couldn't see that I was too skinny. I couldn't see that I couldn't function. There would be times I'd be sitting down and just fall asleep. I couldn't stay awake. I couldn't keep my eyes open. I was lethargic. That I could not see. I was pretty much not in well health. If I would have kept going in the direction I was going, I wouldn't be here anymore. And it took a lot of my friends my family, my fire chief. That's the one that got through to me the most is my fire chief. He was like, Colin, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you've lost too much weight. Your skin and bones, you, you know, you got, eat something, boy, eat something. It took a little while for it to sink in. And then I started noticing that, you know, my face was not looking okay. I was looking like a refugee. I was going down a path I didn't need to go down. I remember this night vividly, very vividly. We were going through a uh, Burger King drive-through and Marissa's like, you gotta eat something. You know, what do you want? We were like pulling into the drive-through. It was winter outside. So I rolled the window down. I was like, just gotta roll the window down. I gotta get some fresh air. Like the wind was not blowing at all that night. And all of a sudden a fresh breeze just blew through the car. And like, it was refreshing. It was kind of like a whole weight had all of a sudden been lifted off my shoulders and like I just felt okay to eat whatever I wanted and I had been praying for that. I, I was struggling for so long and after seeing it I had been praying for that. I need some help. I, I can't do this by myself. Like I said that wind just came through and like all the weight lifted off my shoulders and when I say I went on a full-on all-out eat all you can eat I sure did. I went on a binge bad but in all defense, my body needed it extremely. And before I forget, I did kind of document this area of my life because I was YouTubing during this. So if you guys want to go back and watch the video, it's called New Beginnings. I will try to remember to link it in the description or somewhere up here in a card. I'd finally had my breakthrough. At some point I was like, you know, I've got to do something different. I've got to, I've got to work this out. That's what I started doing. And that's when I started finding peace with food and, you know, and working out in the right way. This was my big main one when it came to food relapsing and like not eating healthy enough and like really kind of being detrimental to myself as far as weight loss and eating and causing a disorder because a lot of people don't talk about it, but I will tell you right now, more people than you think that lose a lot of weight or do weight loss and stuff do end up with an ED. A lot of people don't share it. I was nervous to share that at first, to be honest, but you guys deserve, I wanna bring you guys into my life. I'm telling my story to share it with you guys so you don't make the same mistakes I make. This is the first time I'm really ever sharing any of this outside of my family and really close friends. So I appreciate you guys for being here for my story and, and wanting to know the information that I'm putting out here because like I said, doing this series is so much more than just telling my story. It's I want to help people. But yeah, that's kind of the relapses that I had. And now we're going to go in to the last thing I wished I knew before starting my weight loss journey that helped me a long way. And I didn't find it out until after my relapse that we just talked about. This one will definitely help you guys out big time because it has helped me 
extremely. So let's get over into the last thing I wish I knew. And then we're also gonna have one more question before we wrap this video up. So my last and final tip that I wish I knew is the 80-20 rule. That is where you are good with your eating, your fitness, your working out 80% of the time, and then do whatever the heck you want to with that other 20. If you guys have seen the videos that I've done to show you, and it is true, one day of overeating or eating like crazy or falling off or even two days sometimes isn't gonna screw up your whole weight loss progress you have made. Just like one day working out in the gym isn't gonna cause you to lose over 100 pounds. It's what you do over a long period of time that matters. You build momentum and progress is made over a long period of time. You can go out and have that piece of cake. You can even have that piece of cake and not fall off track. Cake can be within your limit for that day. You know, cake can be within your diet. So having a piece of cake isn't even falling off track. That is my tip. And when I found that out, I have found my peace. I really do enjoy doing food and eating challenges and I was so afraid to do them before because I'm I was afraid it would screw up my progress and that's just not how it worked. I'll probably do a more in-depth look at eating challenge video because those are pretty popular and you guys seem to like them. I might do that and go more in-depth to show you guys, you know, day by day how it did not mess up my progress that I had made and all that stuff. If you guys think you would like that, let me know. Drop a comment or something and we'll do one. On to the last and final question. So the last and final question I got from Courtney was, if you could go back now to your 380 plus self, what advice would you tell him? For a while, I thought to myself, I would tell him how to avoid all the stuff where he screwed up at, but I got to thinking, if I did that, I would not have had the journey that I did have. I would not have learned the things that I did learn and I would not be able to share this story because I wouldn't have made those mistakes to be able to share them with you guys. I wouldn't have been able to learn my own way and what worked out for me without those. I asked myself a question, if I could go back, would I change anything during my journey? And at first I was like, yeah, I wouldn't make those mistakes. But then I was like, you know what? Yeah, I would. I don't wanna change anything about my journey because it's what built me. It built me into who I am today and it is what sculpted the, my whole journey and this series. This series wouldn't exist without those mistakes because ultimately I wanted to make this series to help other people not make those mistakes. So I would tell him, you have an amazing life ahead of you. You have such a huge journey that you're fixing to go into that is going to change your life so drastically that you couldn't even imagine how healthy and how great your life is gonna be after this. And how many people you're gonna be able to help, how you're gonna be able to be around for your family and your friends and do stuff and run. Heck, I was the last person to think I would be running. If I was running before, I was being chased by something and y'all better been running too. So yeah, I would tell him that. There's a lot of things I would tell him. I could go on for hours. The main thing would have been, yeah, like you have such an amazing journey ahead of you. Take it in, enjoy all of it, the good and the bad, learn from it and just do you, dude, and be there for your friends and family and enjoy life because your life's good right now, but you have an even better and amazing one coming ahead because you'll be able to do so much more. That is what I would go back and tell him. Thank you, Courtney, for all your questions. They truly made me think and like I, I really appreciate it. You're awesome, thank you so much. I'm gonna wrap the video up there, guys, but if you did enjoy this week's video, please give it a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it helps out a lot. Invite your friends and family to subscribe to the channel, watch the videos. If you have any friends that are on a health or weight loss journey, have them watch the series, send it over to them, invite them to subscribe to the channel, and also invite them over to my new Facebook page, Colin Joyan. It'll be linked in the description down below. I share a lot of information on there that's not necessarily on here, but I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. You have no idea how much this truly means to me. Your support means to me. Like words, it can't be put into words. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Episode four of Fat to Fit and How I Did It. But until then, peace.